And what is up guys, Technicals Tinkers here. Little different kind of video from the daily vlog, but I've been reading through comments. Again, appreciate all the comments coming through. Everyone watching, thank you again. But several people have asked over the past few weeks about how, uh, what my other business is and how I'm approaching this 3D print startup thing. If you're unfamiliar, I'm a small business owner and I have a business that has nothing to do with 3D printing, but I've been interested in 3D printing and I see the potential uh, machines that just stamp out products that I can put in a box and ship. And so that's highly appealing to me. Uh, I like manufacturing. I like the, uh, uh, the sort of the process behind it. I'm not a people person. And if you're <laughs> kind of like me and you have a touch of the tism, uh, machines making money is of high appeal. This kind person, this is the most recent comment that spurred this video. I think a lot of us may be interested how a successful business owner approaches the financial aspects of starting a 3D business. So I don't know that I would call myself successful. I, I mean, by most metrics I am, uh, but you know, like I do a lot of the self-deprecating thing in the videos and that's not just me fishing for compliments. It's to, it's, it's real. It's to me to keep my ego in check because it will run away with me. So for our purposes, we'll say, yeah, I'm a successful guy. I basically retired. I'm not really retired, but I haven't had a really active role in my business in many years. And that's because I installed a good management team that runs the company. Uh, and so I just go in periodically to check on things, major decisions I, I kind of go through. So I am somewhat involved, but I don't go to a job every single day. And I've not done that for many years. And it's allowed me to sort of focus on some of these side projects. I've had many other startups, you know, some with some success, some with zero success, some absolute failures. And, you know, for various reasons, mostly because of me, uh, the failures, you know, kind of didn't go through. Some have gone on to become a considerably larger. I was a co-founder on a Bitcoin ATM company, which I sold out of that now has hundreds of units doing, I would imagine many, many millions of dollars per month in total transaction volume. But getting back to the 3D print thing, because I imagine that a lot of people watching are 3D printers and probably curious about you know taking it to the next level, or maybe you already sell things on Etsy or eBay or any other place, and you're interested in just watching me and kind of how I'm doing it, maybe you're tremendously more successful than I am, uh, and you're just kind of seeing, watching me flounder. I don't know what the reasons are. I'm just glad that you're watching. I'm just going to kind of riff on this, so my thoughts are probably going to be a little scatterbrained, and I told myself when I started this channel, I wasn't going to put a tremendous amount of effort into it, because like with the crypto channel years ago, I put a lot of effort into the videos, the streams, scripting everything, you know, kind of dialing everything down, and just kind of, I never really saw results from it, so I'm like, you know what, I'm going to approach this just kind of lazy fair I'm going to sneeze it out there <laughs> to the wind and whatever happens, happens. And wouldn't you know, I'm getting a pretty good traction just doing that. So I'm sticking with it. So I'm just going to riff on this. The financial aspects of the 3D print business, I'm looking at it through the lens of I'm, I'm not. I know that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but if to, just to kind of go off on a quick tangent, years ago, I worked in a franchise model for a major national brand. And so I was the GM of a pseudo man it was a florist it was 1-800 flowers here in my city and so it's kind of pseudo manufacturing you're taking in raw material and you're putting it through a process uh that produces a new product and then you're shipping it out so it's not like you're taking in like iron and steel and producing like a, a piece of furniture and then selling it it's a little bit different but it the principles kind of apply and so what i'm getting at here is that my mindset when i look at this as a manufacturing i often think about a lot of the things that i learned from my time there because this is a major corporate sort of franchise structure and if you're unfamiliar franchises are basically where you buy a job and so a big company says okay, we're going to allow you to open a branch of our company wherever, you know, we say it's okay for you to do it. You're going to adhere to every single rule we put out. And on top of that, you're going to pay us like 30% of everything you make every single month just for the privilege of doing that. But often they would send an emissary from uh, their ivory tower in New York to come down and sort of nitpick and tell us everything we're doing wrong and how we, how best we can be running our business. And so I often found this very not offensive, but it kind of became clear, like you're doing all your work up in an ivory tower in New York from afar. And then you come down to the trench. It's like the general coming down to the trench and telling the soldier what he's doing wrong. It, it, it didn't make any sense to me, but we had to listen to them. We had to obey them, uh, you know, because this is the person who's allowing us to stay in business. So getting back to the 3d print thing, oftentimes I don't want to put rigid structures and rigid thinking in place, especially with a startup, because you can create these big handbooks and you look, you look at P and L's and projections and apply, try to apply all these big company 
ideas and 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 methods and mo's uh, to a small business or a startup and that will kill it you have to remain adaptable and flexible and as you get larger some of those things do come into play so my current business is I don't want to say, I, th I think it's a schmedium. I'll call it a schmedium sized business. It's not really a small business. I have a close to 50 uh, employees, uh, you know, equivalent full time employees uh, at my business, multi location. So is it small business to that point? If you look at the uh, what the government says or what financial people say, small business is anything under, I think they say 50 million in total sales every year. That would firmly classify me as a small business, but in terms of like the real world, uh, there's the, there's this huge separation kind of occurring, you know, the gap between rich and poor. Uh, I kind of feel that's kind of happening in business as well. There's kind of this gap between small business becoming smaller and everything else becoming much larger. And there's kind of like not this in-between because when an in-between business kind of crops up, that's proof to large companies like, hey, this business is succeeding. There's something going on here. Let's snap it up and buy it. And I mean, if it was me and I grew a business to that size and a giant company came to me waving a big check and like, uh, you just want to do whatever you want the rest of your life. Here's a check. I would say, yeah. And so you see like these larger companies snapping up smaller companies and a lot, uh, it's mainly in tech, but it happens in manufacturing and stuff like that as well. It happens in all sectors. And so the point being is I don't want to apply these rigid structures. And so to like, you know, sort of address this comment, like, you know, what, what, how are you approaching this financially? Uh, I'm not setting in those, you know, hard line sort of uh, methods in this model. However, that doesn't mean that I have an unlimited budget and I'm just going to kind of throw caution to the wind because initially I was considering doing that in the very, very beginning when I started the 3D print thing. Obviously, I was getting a lot of sales for the crypto miners because new crypto miners were coming out and I was printing a lot of items for it. And I was like, there came a point, there came one week where I got so many orders, like I bought two extra Cobras and that's how I ended up with four Cobras. And so like I saw the sales coming in, I'm like, you know, wow, if I could really expand this out and do new products, I've got all this space in my warehouse. I could put, you know, a hundred printers in there and, you know, I could bring employees in, train them, have this, you know, kind of separate model. And we could do that alongside the business we do in our current warehouse. And, you know, it could be a nice extra little sort of bump to what we're already doing. It's completely unrelated. And that kind of burns me a little bit. I wish that there was some way for me to serve my current business it's retail smoke shops with 3D printed items. But unfortunately, you know, there are some things I can do. Like I've done some of these rolling trays. There might be some gift or art type items that are of interest to the customers coming into those stores. But really, there's not really like one thing. I can't 3D print water pipes because, you know, people put fire on it and it's going to melt the plastic. Um, you know, stand holders, display things. There are support items that I can print. Uh, but really, it's kind of insignificant. And when you're going to buy those items, you really want to make sure that when you're buying stuff like that, it's of a commercial grade that will last. And I don't know that I would want a 3D printed thing, you know, supporting or holding up a piece of glass that costs many, many hundreds of dollars or an electronic device that's worth a whole lot of money. I'd rather just buy the commercial solution and, and kind of go from there and explore this 3D print thing separate to where it doesn't rely on my core business to sort of support it. As far as budgetary concerns go, I am a little bit freer than the average bear uh, because, you know, I do see this as a business and I want to give it uh, all the potential, you know, all the, the resources that it needs to really prove itself. But I'm not going to go out and, you know, kind of throw just endless amounts of money at it because I want it to grow and scale. And so if I see that there is potential uh, in a certain segment, then, yeah, I'll spend the money. So, for instance, the Orange Storm Giga that I bought um, is a very, very large printer, but it's like twenty five hundred bucks. And so that's kind of outside the range of most people, unless you're a real hardcore pipe hit and hobbyist uh, or someone who sees the potential in it. And so for the Giga, I'm um, see it uh, one of two ways. One is like, you know, these novelty art prints but more so large prints that kind of somewhat serve a purpose. So, you know, some people are printing like furniture, small stools, chairs, things like that. Uh, but also, you know, if you wanted to do a car part or uh, some piece of structure that maybe fits inside of a building, like it's like an air diffuser or a duct or an air register or return or something like that, there's a lot of possibilities there just due to its sheer size. So I see that as a, a potential, you know, way to invest in sort of this. And again, to sort of broaden the scope, because as of recently, I was like, someone had commented and it kind of spurred me as to reply. And a lot of people were replying to my reply about I'm doing too many things at once, doing too many niches and 3D printing, you got to focus in on one niche. I mean, you know, and my retort being is like, how, how do I know which niche to focus on? Because 
I mean, I just, you know, why not just do a whole bunch at once? And then if something sticks, you focus on that. And if something doesn't, you kick it to the curb and go on to the next thing. Um, because I want to do a whole bunch of different things, uh, you kind of need like, a, to, in order to print large stuff, you need a large printer because printing a whole bunch of small pieces and fitting them together, it's a lot of post-production and it's a lot of, um, you know, potential for failure. It's more places that could fail. It's kind of the other thing too, is post-production because I, you, if you've seen the videos, you often may have caught that I'm like allergic to post-production, allergic to painting these things after the fact, allergic to all the artsy stuff. I'm really hyper-focused on being able to print things, put them in a box and ship them. And that's because of scalability. It's not just my laziness, it's because of scalability. Because if I do get to the point where I can start printing these things in volume and shipping them out, um, there's no real way to scale that. So I understand a lot of my viewers are probably watching M3 is 3D. I'm a big fan of his. <laughs> I took it, stole his idea for the D20 cube. Uh, I no longer sell the coffee cup because it's just not going to work. But uh, like I often look at his business from my perspective as uh, another business owner. And I often think there's a lot of things in there that, you know, don't make sense to me, but he knows his business more than I do. Uh, but like his business can't scale and that's really because of the post-production work that he does unless you want to bring somebody in i mean i'm sure the argument could be like well yeah i can because you know i can bring in people to help me do this or that but again in my view in my world a business is not scalable unless you can you can clearly see yourself being completely removed from the business entirely you never touch it again and it continues to run and grow just fine and i think really having that mindset is really the only way to fly because you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to work. At least I don't, I don't want to work. I want to do whatever I want to do. And I like this 3D printing thing. And I, what I like to do is to invent systems that make money and I can move on to another system that makes money and I can continue to do just whatever I want to do. But like a model like that, you know, with the painting and the post-production and having the knowledge of these finicky machines, um, you can't really remo remove yourself from that process without everything sort of collapsing. And if you brought someone else in, to help facilitate those things like sure over time they'd know how to do it but what if they quit then you're back to square one you have to train someone for another three months uh, six months on all the intricacies of operating the business uh you don't want to be able to have to do that you don't want that kind of vulnerability you need a solid framework in place to allow it to scale and so that's really why i'm allergic to the post-production thing and keeping things easy because if you brought in an employee all they have to do is press send file, take the thing off the printer, put it in a box and ship it, and maybe do some light maintenance. Um, that's way better. That's way more appealing. And that is scalable. And that's how you're going to be able to grow, in my opinion. Again, because I'm a stranger in this area, I've not have a lot of experience with 3D printing. I've got some experience in various forms of manufacturing uh, with my current business, businesses I've been involved in previously. And so I kind of have, you know, sort of these ideas about it. But again, 3D printing is highly appealing because it's just it, all the work is done by the machines. And so if we can eliminate as much as we possibly can of human intervention, having to do these things, the better. I also think that gives you a lot more runway in terms of the financial sort of side of things, uh, because if you were starting a service based business, your runway is going to get eaten up so fast because it's all labor dependent and it's just a big question mark. So if you started a consulting firm or a, um, a, a lawyer's firm or whatever, and let's say you had a million dollars to start with, like, yeah, your, your, your startup costs are pretty low. Lease on a space, some, some stationary, uh, uh, a cool logo, I guess. And then a receptionist to start taking calls. So that doesn't cost a whole lot, but your big expense is going to be in your labor. And so you go through the process and vet people and try to get the best quality of person that you can. But what if they're not great? What if they're not a good lawyer and people don't want to use that service or they don't come back for that service and that's just going to kill you. You can eat up all that money and then you have to go back and hire someone new with 3d printing and manufacturing in general. A lot of the costs are upfront and they're kind of static. And I, I really do like that model because once you buy the machine, machine's expensive, uh, your costs, your ongoing costs are pretty low. It's really just filament, which is dirt cheap and then marketing. And so that could be as much or as little as you want. And it depends entirely on the product you want. Again, as I see it, because again, you know, I'm sure people come in and correct me here and please do. Um, I'm a stranger in this place. This is just how I see it. So again, as far as the financials go, I understand. That's what I'm saying is I understand that there is the capital expenditure on the machines, the section 179 type stuff. 
uh, versus the people. And again, the tism in me makes me really, really like that. So if you like these scatterbrain comments, or if you want to know more about my previous experience or anything else that I think about the 3D print industry as I see it now, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you hate this kind of video and just want me to stick completely to the vlogs uh, sort of format, please let me know in the comments below because I'm very glad to do that because it's just as easy for me to do that because I'm already doing it every single day. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more or less of content like this. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.